Okay, well, just want to make a quick little update video on the Blickendurfer's number five typewriter that I've been restoring. Uh, first things first, I wanted to show the um, the roller that I made. Can I see here? And just want to make a couple comments. First off, uh, I was having problems with the typewriter working as well as I wanted. Um, turns out. It was a combination of problems. For one, it was the ink roller. So you can see I'm, I ended up making my own little ink roller. Uh, I went and I did some research and I found out they have a, a ink roller that they sell at like Office Depot or, or stationery stores called, a, I believe it's an IR40. I went to Office Depot and I found one. It was a PR40. And it's, it's a little roller that they use for like uh, pricing guns at stores. Uh, anyways, it was the correct diameter. I just had to cut it down. Um, the original, this is another one that I made. You can see a little better though. Uh, I'm selling this one on eBay. But if you look, I made a little, I took a little brass tube and made an, an armature for it. Uh, or sorry, an arbor, I guess you would say. And then I cut the, I took apart the, the IR40 roller and cut it down to the proper size. So I made two of them. This is a spare one I'm selling on eBay right now. And um, the original Blickendurfers has a little brass tube in it. So I wanted to make one that was kind of the same design. So real happy with how that came out. This is the other one I made here on the typewriter. One thing I did notice was it's important to adjust this spring so that it puts the proper tension on the arm when it comes back into its resting position. It's also important to adjust this up and down so that you it has the right angle when it comes into contact. Mine originally was raised way high up which gives clearance uh, between the roller and the paper of course which is good. I moved it back down, bent the arm a little bit, adjusted the spring and that brought the ink roller in further underneath the head so when the head comes down it's instead of a glancing blow it's kind of smashing down into the roller and kicking the roller out and that gives a better inking action from what I found out so uh, and also like I said I tweaked the spring a little bit so that it has more tension when it's at rest so that made a big difference you can see I'm typing my dad a letter here um, that made a big big difference in the quality of the the impressions on the, on the roller when it came to the ink um, another thing I did was I tried a bunch of different inks I tried uh, some of the inks for like my fountain pens these little like on a fountain pen there's like a little cartridge inside and I, I dumped one of those onto the roller uh, that IR40 roller comes pre-inked from the factory, but it doesn't last very long. Um, I tried this ink, but I was very disappointed in this. Um, it had been recommended on some web page regarding Blickendurfer's typewriters, but I was disappointed in, in this one. It doesn't seem to work very well. I just got this one off of Amazon, and I'm just now testing it, and I'm really impressed with the quality. Uh, I just put six or seven drops on the roller and, and I haven't had to re-ink it yet and I'm uh, already a couple paragraphs in. So real real pleased with this one. I think I'm going to stick with this. So uh, I have a little stand here that I got for the iPhone. I'm just going to try to do this all in one shot but what I want to do and it's probably going to shake a little bit on the table but let me hook up the, the phone here see if I can kind of get the angle right and I want to show it, uh, show the typewriter typing if I can. Oh, uh, before I forget the other thing, really great paper. Got this on Amazon.com also. Uh, Southworth, it's uh, 24 pound and it's 100% cotton. I also tried their 32 pound paper. Uh, previously I had been using 20 pound copier paper, but that wasn't working so well. Um, I tried the 32 pound paper initially, uh, but it's way too heavy. This one is perfect for writing letters. So I wanted to mention that in case anyone's wondering, 
you know, between 32 pound or 24 pound. In my opinion, 24 pound is, is just great. Okay, let me try hooking up the, the camera here and maybe I can kind of get a little, a little video going showing the typewriter actually doing its thing. Um, like I said, try to just try to get get the right angle here without having to do too much editing, and kind of that way you can kind of get a sense of you know how the typewriter mm. works and what it looks like kind of in action. So try, eh, I guess that's about right. Okay, camera's probably gonna shake because the typewriter kind of clunky, but let let me see if I can make a video here. Um, and I'll just give you, a, let me go back to, to working on my letter here and then I'll just give you a couple of lines of typing here. And you may notice I'm hunting and pecking uh, on on a on a normal QWERTY keyboard. I'm I, I'm a touch typist. And I've been typing th uh, 35 years or something like that. 45 uh, 35 years, and I type about a hundred or 130 words a minute generally. Uh, on this typewriter, since it has a different keyboard, I got I'm back to the hunt and peck uh, method. This is only about the third letter I've typed using. Uh, this keyboard. I can almost do a little touch typing, but not not right. Um, so that's why I'm a little bit hunt and peck method here. And uh, some of the characters, I'm still a little. I have to stop and think. Okay, where's the? You know, how do I do the, the apostrophe, for example? And here is an example where I back up. And this little guy, as I mentioned in one of my other videos, shows you where the character is gonna come. So I'm gonna fix my mistake here with just three periods. So one, two, three. And then capital I. And you can hear it beeped at the end there. And then the way I do it, as I mentioned before, is I just, I advance the, the roller, and then you, you reach down here, grab this, and return the carriage. In the little manual from the 1800s or 1900s, they tell you to do the, that in one motion, uh, as I remember, kind of all at the same time. I, I never got that to work, so I just do one and then the other. So you kind of get uh, you can kind of get an idea there of how the typewriter works, um, and I've uh, spent quite a bit of time uh, adjusting and, and and the typewriter and everything. Uh, just to wrap the video up here real quick, one thing I wanted to mention was um, uh, I found this adjustment was actually a little more important than I initially thought. You see, I put a little more tension on this spring. What this spring here does is it's how quickly and powerfully this 
wheel snaps back into its home position. And I noticed that when I was typing, I think it was the comma, sometimes it would pop a Y out. So I did a test where I was just typing, you know, comma, 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 real fast. And when I went really fast, I noticed every six or seven characters, a Y would pop in there. And what I realized was this was not having time to snap back. So when I put more tension on this little spring, which pulls this back into its, its uh, return position, that allowed me to type faster. And when I loosened this, the frequency of commas and Ys getting popping up incorrectly increased. So um, <clears throat> that's turned out to be a little more important adjustment than I initially had thought. And again, this little spring and the home position and, and this little uh, piece here bending this in such a direction, in such a way that the ink head is underneath instead of kind of over here, more a glancing blow makes a big difference. Uh, but you can kind of see, you know, how nice the letter's coming out. Um, the other adjustment is the one on the bottom of the typewriter here, that that little guy right there. And from what I can kind of tell, it, it doesn't seem to be quite as critical an adjustment, but it, it seems to have to do with the, the ratcheting forward between each keystroke of, of this. I think it's the little, uh, there's a little indexing mechanism back there, which is as the carriage advances each tooth to the left, that's how uh, much tension it takes to snap that back. Both of those adjustments also translate into how difficult it is to push the keys. For example, if you take all the tension off of this, the keys are very floppy. But And same with the one in the back. So initially I thought, oh, well, that's how, how to adjust how hard I have to push. This typewriter is kind of, it takes, uh, you want to put a little tension on it is what I found. Uh, if you try to make it too, you know, easy to type over here, that part's good. But then the other mechanisms that kind of get ready for the next character, they suffer. So you kind of, I found it's better to make the typewriter a little bit, a little bit more tension in the springs and then just be a little more forceful when you type. And that seems to work pretty well. So anyways, I'll wrap this video up, but you can see, uh, Starting to, starting to work pretty well uh, as far as being able to hammer out some letters here. And uh, it's, um, it's, it's been really fun typing the last couple of letters. And, and like I said, I just wanted to pass along a couple, couple details about you know the paper, the ink roller, and again, the ink. Uh, switching to this ink really made a big difference. Um, the, the letters are much more uh, fully formed. Um, and this ink here, which I guess is, is probably good for stamp pads, just didn't happen to, to work so well for the little roller thing. Uh, I just bought another uh, roller also for the typewriter, so I may, maybe I'll have another video about that one. This one uh, is, you know, like Times New Roman. And um, I picked up a picked up one that seems to be like a Helvetica roller, so I might, might give that a, a try. So. Anyways, that's the latest on the Blickens Durfer number five. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.